What's going on everybody? My name is Ben and welcome back to the bench guys for another episode of Sci-Fi Wednesdays and the final episode of our T-70 X-Wing by Bandai. Today we're going to go ahead and finish off the kit. I'm going to get it mounted to the base and we're going to show you the finished product. So let's get on with it. Now last episode you might remember that I went ahead and worked on a shadow box that's going to go ahead and act as our base. And it's just a basic unfinished wooden shadow box. So it's not really that complicated. And we went ahead and removed some of the hardware and we plugged up those holes that were left with some milliput. Once that was dry, I went ahead and did a little bit of preliminary sanding and it actually worked out pretty well. So today we're going to go ahead and start off by sanding the rest of the box, making sure it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to go ahead and start priming. I'm going to go ahead and use Steinores Gray Primer. I'm not sure if it's the best primer to use in this case, but it's all I really have and it's going to work fine, I'm sure. So let's go ahead, jump into our first time lapse. We're going to sand the base, prime the base with some Steinores Gray Primer. Then we're going to sand the primer, making sure it's very smooth. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and overcoat the entire base in a flat black color. Now, why flat black? Well, I actually have an idea because I want to change up the design of the base just a little bit from what I had planned previously. We'll talk about that in a bit, guys. Let's go ahead and first jump into that time lapse and get this all sanded and painted and we'll be back and we'll see how it turns out. Let's get moving. All right, everybody, we are back and our base is nicely painted in flat black. Now let's talk a little bit about my plan. Originally, I had wanted to go ahead and mount this polished chrome Rebel Alliance symbol right here under the front of the base. I thought that'd be kind of cool to do. I've actually kind of changed my mind. And the reason for that is that I feel like it's too much of a distraction. It sits kind of elevated above the base. It really does shine and glint light. The minute you move that, it kind of blinds you almost every time it hits you in the face. So I just really don't like the look of it. Now with the X-Wing attached on, you do kind of have that impression of having a mirrored base. You do get to see a little bit here and there, but I just don't like the look of it. Something about it just doesn't really send me. So I've decided to go ahead and forego that. Now we're going to change it up with another idea. So if we're going to go ahead and remove this Rebel Alliance symbol, this polished chrome, we go ahead and toss that, what are we going to put in its place? And I did really like the idea of having something like that, like a symbol for the Rebel Alliance that would match up nicely with there being an X-Wing on the base. So we're going to go ahead and continue that same idea. And to do that, I went ahead and went online and I found this. This is just a basic symbol of the Rebel Alliance and it is just printed on regular paper. I did two sizes, a larger one and a smaller one. And I'm going to go ahead and use this as a template to make our own mask to go ahead and airbrush 
the symbol onto the base itself. That way it doesn't stick up, it doesn't detract, and I think it's going to be a much better look. Now to make that mask, I thought maybe we could go ahead and use some frisket paper. And this stuff is great. I love it. It's very thin. It's somewhat opaque, so you can kind of see through it a little bit, which is very, very nice. And all we would have to do is line this up and make sure the top layer doesn't move. Just trace out the Rebel Alliance symbol. However, going ahead and tracing this out is going to give us a mask, yes, but it's going to be a very hard-edged mask. And I don't really want something to be as hard-edged as what this will give us. So instead, I'm not going to use a frisket paper. It is an option, but I'm going to go ahead and go with a basic idea of just cutting out this mask and using the paper as a bit more of a soft mask. I have a very sharp exacto knife blade and all I have to do is just trace around the symbol, go all around the perimeter, and then just pop that center section out and I will have a very nice soft mask. Shouldn't be all that difficult to do, a little time consuming, but I think it's going to be well worth it. So let's go ahead and get this all cut out. We're going to use some Vallejo Red. We're going to go ahead and mask off the area we want painted on the base. Then we'll go ahead and take some of my airbrush templates that I have for when I do marbling coats and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and come in with some very thin black to give the red a little bit of some variation. So on with that time lapse, guys. If this works out well, I'll overcoat the entire thing with some future floor polish. We're also going to go ahead and paint the stand for the X-Wing itself. I have an idea for that. And then we'll be back and hopefully we'll be in good position to finish off the kit. Let's keep going, guys. We're almost there. All right, everybody, we are back. And I got to tell you, I like how this base turned out. It's very subtle, yes. Having it overcoated with Future gave it a little bit of like a satiny finish. And the red of the Rebel Alliance symbol kind of shines a little differently in different lights. So I'm happy with it. I think it looks pretty cool. But now we're going to go ahead and move over to the battery pack. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to attach the battery pack to the inside of the shadow box. We're going to then wire up the positive and the negative leads, and we'll be good to go. Now, in order to get this battery pack up inside, we're going to build a little compartment 
environment out of foam core. That should be very simple, easy to do. I love working with foam core. It's a great product. So we're going to go ahead and build a little compartment for the battery box up inside the shadow box. So it's like a box within a box. Shouldn't be all that difficult to do. We're going to go ahead and just measure out the correct measurements for the battery pack itself. Then we're going to cut it out with a very sharp X-Acto knife, and then we'll just glue it down with hot glue. Not a big deal, guys. It should be very simple. Let's go ahead and just trace out the outline here of the battery box itself. This is going to keep the battery pack snugly fit up inside, so it's not going to wobble around. It's not going to fall out. It will still be replaceable to change out the batteries. I think it's going to be a really good way to go ahead and get this done. Now that the top is cut out, let's go ahead and cut out a side piece as well. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I've already kind of figured out how tall I want this piece. We're going to use my ruler and let's just cut this one piece off the foam core scrap right like that. And that should be perfect. Let's go ahead and test fit that and see if it's the correct measurement and size. Yep, that looks good. I like that. So now we can go ahead and hot glue that with our glue gun. So one minute guys, let's go ahead and take care of that real quick off camera. We'll be back and I'll show you the finished product. And here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and show you the finished product, our 172nd scale T70 X-Wing by Bandai, painted up in Snap Wexley's green and white camo from The Rise of Skywalker. Here it is, and man, I gotta tell you, what a fun kit this was to build. So you can see here, we've got everything painted. We've got the canopy unmasked. We've got our droid installed. We've got our base airbrushed with Vallejo red and flat black. Everything looks fantastic. I love it. Now, going from the chrome like this here to the red, I think was a really big move. I think it helps to not only kind of tie it all together, but it doesn't look as stark and it isn't as detracting from the actual X-Wing, at least in my opinion. So yeah, I think this was a wonderful little project. Super simple in terms of electronics, a beautiful kit, went together without any issue at all. Of course, as you can see underneath here, we do have the wires, we have the battery pack, so that's all looking great. Battery pack is nice and snug right up in that little compartment. And the nice thing about it is that I've left enough slack that I can remove the battery pack without any trouble whatsoever. So all we'd have to do is just pull it out and then take it up and we have it out so we can go ahead and replace the batteries and then stick it right back inside the compartment. Super simple, very snug, very easy. Plus it's got a built-in switch. We don't have to worry about any other wiring anywhere. Great little idea for a small little build like this. I might have to take a little bit of that hot glue though just to go ahead and tack these wires down to keep them from getting caught underneath the base itself. But I think it's a really good system and super easy guys, honestly. I'm giving you guys a little bit of a close up here. Hopefully you can tell I did do some weathering here and there. I could have gone a little bit even farther with weathering, but I don't really like to go too far with weathering. I'm still learning a lot about it. Just did a little bit here and there to give it a slight bit of wear. Now, of course, we have that pole that it sits on. I actually airbrushed it from red all the way to black to give it a bit of a faded effect to match the Rebel Alliance red that I have there as well. And let's go ahead and flip it on and I'll show you the LEDs. We've got five LEDs in here, one on the cockpit and four, one in each engine. So let's go ahead and flip that on and I'll show you the effect. There we go. Now I went with a violet color for each of the engines and I went with a cool white for the cockpit. Again, I'd left the cockpit kind of muted. You really can't see it much during the daylight or in a well-lit room. However, in a low light situation, you can see it much better. Now you have to excuse my camera. It doesn't really like the whole low light thing, but you can kind of get the general idea. We've got the four LEDs in the engines and we have the one LED in the cockpit and you can really make it out in a low light situation. It again is just kind of like a floodlight to just uh, illuminate the bottom part of the cockpit. Cockpit. It probably doesn't do anything or meet any purpose, but I just kind of wanted to try it out and I like it. I think it's kind of cool. But back to the normal light, you can still see the engine LEDs. You can see a little bit of that cockpit LED, so I'm happy with it. That is it, guys. We are done with our 172nd scale T70 X-Wing by Bandai, painted up in Snap Wexley's green and white. We've got that base on with a custom airbrushed Rebel Alliance symbol there made from my own masks. I gotta tell you, what a fun build this was. If you guys are interested in doing something similar to this, I highly recommend this kit or any of these Bandai kits. Super simple to do. But anyway, we are done, guys. That is is it. We are finished off with this build series for Sci-Fi Wednesdays. I'm going to take like a week off of Sci-Fi and concentrate on my aircraft builds, but we will have another season coming soon for Sci-Fi Wednesdays. So until then, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on the next build project for Sci-Fi Wednesdays here on Ben Builds. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.